time. Fingers crossed, Ceresa prepared to use the summoning spell she learnt from Morgana. Even after the summoning circle had faded away, no one had answered her call. this? I wonder what's inside? Cool!
What are you doing? you I'd save them myself. <laughs> Sarissa squealed in delight. She was still a child after all. Chance! 
for the finale! <laughs> They had defeated the formidable fairy. If only slightly, Ceresa felt she had made a difference. Not bad, huh? Told you I'm good for more than just carrying you around. But Cheshire was not impressed. Up, demon. Ceresa was fed up with Cheshire's arrogant attitude.
Come to that voice! A familiar voice once again echoed through the trees. Ceresa looked in the voice's direction to see a strange wisp, buried deep in a cap. A wisp? So you're the one who talked to us back there? You know, I haven't introduced myself. My name is Ignis, the keeper of this forest. Good on you for taking care of that circus. I knew I was right about you. Something tells me that Ring Master won't be enjoying his to bees anymore. The pity. He was an absolute brute. Play a bit part in someone else's show? No thanks! Knowing this voice belonged to a wisp put Ceresa infinitely more at ease. But Cheshire said not a word. He seemed to have no interest in the wisp at all. You said your name was Ignis, right? Ignis? You wouldn't happen to know where we can find the remaining elemental cores, would you? Of course! The next call is at the bottom of the lake. The bottom of the lake? Well, I suppose that's lucky. I was always better at sinking than swimming. The problem is coming back up again. No need to worry. Just drain the water. But you'll have to go over a towering tree in order to get there. To get to the bottom of a lake, you need to climb the tallest tree in the forest. Isn't that poetic? The tallest tree, huh? Something the matter? Nope! Not a thing! Clock towers! Giant statues! Yes! Witches love high places! Thanks for your help! You're very welcome. I know the secret pathways of this forest. I may be able to take you to somewhere you've been before. If you'd like me to guide you, just ask me any time. Think of it as showing my gratitude for taking care of those pesky fairies. An ancient tree, long felled, bared its fangs at Ceresa. 
Ceresa could not shake the feeling that Avalon Forest itself conspired against her. Okay. Wow. That's high. It'll be fine. Just don't look down. The monster's body was hard as steel. Cheshire let out a frustrated growl. <laughs> the monster's wings were hard as steel. Cheshire's claws seemed like toys by comparison. It had found a new target. Ceresa knew she must fight, but she was petrified with fear. Like a hawk hunting mice, 
The draconic fairy searched for its prey. Cheshire tried desperately to transform, but with Cereza's magic in flux from fear, his body remained tiny. Pathetic weakling! The cuddly body did not take the edge off his harsh words. Giving in to her fear, Cereza scooped up Cheshire and ran. They had escaped with their lives, but Cheshire was furious at Cereza for her cowardly retreat. Oh. Cereza stood silently, fists clenched. More than anything, she was angry at herself for once again succumbing to her fear. Cheshire's attacks didn't make so much as a dent in that monster's armor. Oh, what am I going to do? <sighs> I... I... Give up already! You'll never change! That's not true! Nobody likes you! You really think you can become a great witch? Stop! Stop talking! Get a hold of yourself! Move! Growled the demon, trying to shake Ceresa from her stupor. Mummy, Mummy believed in me. Closer. It's nearby. I know it. Take money! 
Focus! Got to keep moving! The vile Jabberwock had been defeated. Ceresa was ecstatic.
What's wrong? Not even interested in getting a new power anymore? Yeah, this won't get you home either, but I'm sure it'll help us get closer. Unable to contain her childish glee, Ceresa explained how they had taken down the Jabberwock. It is a miracle you escaped unscathed. I thought I told you to find a safe place and stay put. But I must admit I am surprised. Perhaps you have grown more than I thought. But it will take until dawn to complete. You must survive until then. Y yes ma'am. Skill at controlling a demon determines one's worth as a witch. Remember this if you hope to take on any more monsters in that forest and live to tell the tale. You're hopeless. And with that, Ceresa's good mood disappeared as quickly as it had come. Yes, my dearest Teresa. Come this way. Teresa.
The shade vanished with a blood-chilling scream that echoed through the trees. Unable to take Cheshire's abuse any longer, Ceresa leapt to her feet. Behind her tears, Ceresa's eyes burned with fury. I save you, and this is the thanks I get! Maybe if you weren't so helpless, I wouldn't need to fight all your battles! Cheshire was not about to back down. Surprised! I wouldn't expect a demon like you to understand anyway! And just so we're clear, you say I'm weak, but you can't survive without me either, remember? Look at you! You wouldn't last five minutes in this forest without me! Their fight was quickly reaching its boiling point. Why don't you just behave like a proper demon and do as I say? <coughs> Cheshire's eyes narrowed. For a second he was quiet. Cheshire broke the silence with a threatening growl. I wish I never summoned you! <laughs> Good. Good! That's it! We're through! Ceresa's final words echoed off the trees. Then all was still. A large gash was cut on Cheshire's leg. Bits of cotton were falling out, along with his magical energy. The fairies had not been kind to their captive. Cheshire could hide his pain no longer. That cut! Unless the wound was mended, the magic-infused threads that bound Cheshire to this world would not last long. Hold still! If you move around like that, you'll just make things worse! Ceresa needed to suture the wound as soon as possible. There was only one way she could think to do it. precious tool, and defend it as you would your very heart. Sorry, Morgana, but I found something more important. These were the precious locks Ceresa was growing out to resemble her mother. 
As expected, they worked their magic. Cheshire's wound closed in an instant. Don't blame me if that teacher of yours has a fit, Cheshire said quietly. Don't worry, it'll go back. Besides, if it wasn't for me, you wouldn't be in this mess in the first place. I promise to send you back. Umbra Witch's honor. What, what I'm trying to say is... But before she could finish, Cheshire had already returned to his miniature form. Well, get a move on, will you? He added with a squeak. <laughs> yes, your majesty. <laughs> Teresa gave Cheshire a tight embrace. Somehow, she felt that Cheshire was doing the same. Restoration magic! I've never been able to pull that off before. I wonder if it might work on something else. Something made them stop. A strange presence. They were not alone. Stop! We need to get to a stepping stone to see the ruin in our kingdom. We will not allow him to wake that plastic child from his slumber. That spook is not easily quenched. The regal fairy continued his haughty monologue. Still, his thick accent was nigh unintelligible. This is hopeless. It must be some kind of fairy dialect. So, what? Are you saying you're the fairy king or something? in need of a good spanking. Cheshire looked happy to oblige. Human and demon, dead child, Miss Puka, whose name strikes fear across all three realms. We shall call down a blast from the heaven and make them rule their folly.
to business.
about this. The two sensed danger in the fairy named Puka's words and began to run. Long live the fairy kingdom! Love it, Puka. guy hmm? what are you on about what the oh give me a break it happened Seresa hurriedly began wiping her face clean the spectacle was too much for Cheshire he rolled with laughter Creepy fairy best hope we never cross paths again. Okay, Chucklepuss, joke's over. All right, let's get a move on. Ceresa frowned and stormed off. Trying unsuccessfully to control his laughter, Cheshire followed after. But each glance at Ceresa sent him back into fits of seam-bursting chortles. Ugh. <sighs> 
dangerous. Ceresa let out a sigh of relief. The wolf seemed as energetic as ever. You're going to take us to Lucaon? We must be getting close. Come on, Cheshire, hurry! <laughs> Morgana's ghostly form appeared. She took one look at Ceresa and furrowed her brow. Ceresa, what have you done with your hair? Sorry. I just... I needed it for something. Ceresa explained how she had used her hair to save Cheshire. For the sake of the demon! Ceresa, never forget who is the master and who the subject. Under normal circumstances, now would have a stern lecture. But that will have to wait for your safe return. My spell is almost complete. I will have you out of that forest soon. Just hold on a bit longer. Oh. Thanks, Morgana. The fairies are a formidable foe. But use all I taught you and defeat them. May the moon light your path. Stay safe, Ceresa. Oh, I'll defeat them all right. And after that, I'll meet Lucan, get that power, and send you back. Ceresa and Cheshire exchanged a glance. Getting the power from Lucan would mean the end to their journey. It would mean saying farewell. Come on, we're almost there. Oh! <laughs> 
A voice echoed through the trees. It was one of the rare sounds in this forest that put Serata's heart at ease. Ignis! Congratulations on destroying all four cores! You've put those berries in a right kerfuffle! We couldn't have done it without you, Ignis. Your advice really helped us out. Just doing my part. I told you, it's my job to know the goings on in Avalon. I must say, though, I'm honestly quite impressed you made it this far. We've seen so much of this forest. I dare say we know more about it than you. <laughs> Maybe you're right. Next time I'll ask you for directions. I've been waiting a long time for someone like you, Miss. Waiting? Why? You see... I've lived in Avalon Forest for ages now. It used to be such a beautiful, lovely place. The fairies changed that. They corrupted this forest and terrorized its inhabitants. I've seen them do such horrible things, powerless to do anything but watch. That's why I've been waiting. Waiting for someone to wake us from this bad dream. I'd have done it myself if I still... Ignis, were you? Sorry, I, I got carried away for a second. Ahead lies that which the fairies have fought so hard to keep from you. I believe it is what you entered this forest to find. Do you mean look on? Go on! The seal to the altar is now broken! Be safe, you two. May Avalon's blessing be upon you. Cheshire, are you ready? Just rip in! Claws first! Don't give yourself a chance to be afraid! Cheshire's steady voice filled Teresa with courage.
Puka, the ostentatious fairy from earlier. He appeared slightly charred from the explosion. Well, if it isn't the self-proclaimed king, what is it this time? We have no words for you, girl! Your infernal compatriot, however, still owes us an answer to our proposition. The fairy Puka was trying to tempt Cheshire, offering to send him back to Inferno. Did he truly have the power to open a portal right here, right now? opened a massive fiery gate. Ceresa could feel the heat from beyond. The familiar sounds of the forest were joined by the faint cries of the damned. Cheshire? Cheshire slowly approached the gate. As he neared the threshold, memories of their journey came flooding back to Ceresa. Once again, Cheshire had rejected Puka's offer. So be it! But Inferno's fires must be dead! If you will not return, then send that vile girl in your stead! Thank you! Ceresa's question fell on deaf ears. Puka was busy cackling maniacally. Until... Blind with rage, turned his gaze on Ceresa. The demon bared its fangs and pounced. Cheshire. Cheshire rampaged. He gave only violent growls in response. Run home way! 
Cheshire regained control long enough to muster a few words. A cold, bitter wind continued to blow mercilessly, but their hearts were not cold at all. Together, they could overcome any obstacle. That belief caused their hearts to shine brighter than the sun. Challenge you cannot overcome. Seresa, you amaze me. I'm not alone. I would have never made it this far without Cheshire's help. Yes, your control of that demon is a testament to your skill as a witch. Soon we will meet at last. Sarisa, I count down the hours. How can I help? Why, Sarisa, you've already brought me exactly what I need. What? What? I did? Yes! You brought the sacrifice! That demon, that demon is perfect. Is perfect. Just, what Just what we need to break the curse. curse. What? Seresa could not believe her ears. Sacrifice Cheshire? Hurry! Hurry. I must I absorb must that absorb demon's, demon's power. power. At long, At long last, last, the curse, curse will be broken. broken. Sacrifice Cheshire? I can't do that! He's my friend! Your friend? Your friend. You mean you mean that, that demon? demon. Sereza, what, what are you saying? saying? Look, at, Look it. at it! Demons, Demons are, are infernal creatures that feast on human souls! souls. You witches harness, harness their power, power as a tool! As a, tool. A, weapon, a weapon, nothing more! more. 
You're wrong. Cheshire is no tool. He's a living creature with his own thoughts and dreams. We made it this far by working together. So I'm not about to offer him up like some sacrificial goat. I want to help you, but I simply cannot do that. Oh, I don't believe this. I'm sorry, Sarisa, but you leave me no choice. Look on. Seresa saw Lucan's face, only a moment ago so full of hope, now contorted by sorrow. She wanted desperately to help him. There must be something else. I'll help you find another way. You don't understand. This is my last chance. Desperation in Ceresa's voice. For an instant, Lucan hesitated. But his mind was made up. Captured by the fairy prince, Cheshire's life force was being drained. I can't believe I trusted you! Ceresa knew what she had to do.
can destroy that, I might be able to free Cheshire! For that, time to take back what he stole. Okay, let's go. Ha <laughs> ha! 
from Cheshire. All right, one element down. Yes! 
Push it! Let's go! Having lost Cheshire's power, Lucaon struggled to stay on his feet, and then... Heroic demon? Such altruism was unheard of throughout all infernal texts. But Ceresa understood. You did? The sorrow and anger were gone from Lucan's eyes. My soul, My soul cannot, cannot hold, hold this fool much, much longer. longer. I figured it. This time was my last chance. No! I thought demons were all heartless monsters. But I was wrong. For what I tried to do, the only heartless one was me. All of a sudden, there was an ear-splitting crack, and a flash of light illuminated the sky. Yeah. 
Morgana had succeeded in breaking the barrier trapping them in the forest. Of course! If we can get you to my master, she'll find a way to save you! What? what? Oh, there's still time! Come on! We have to get you to her! Lucan, I won't let you die here! Splendid! Oh, the pathos is palpable! <laughs> It was Puka, the self-proclaimed king. His usual retinue was nowhere to be seen. Though his outfit had seen better days, his elocution was still to be admired. We're in no mood for your riddles. Back off! Why? We have no need to quarrel. Our subjects will gladly escort you to the of the forest. And led by our fairy light, one ill needs that lupine guide. Leave the filthy beast where he lies. Hearing his words, Ceresa knew it had been Puka who had betrayed the fairy king. Puka, who had torn Lukan's family apart before cursing him to wander the forest in solitude. You fiend! Enough! I will run no longer. But in exchange, let those two go. No! Lukan, you can't! This is for the best, Sarisa. My time is up. Look on! Don't give up! We're not going to let you take him! Got it? And for the record, I knew you were lying about being a king! We shall be eclipsed no longer! Fairy brethren, the cursed child is finally within our grasp! The false king's son reaches its nadir, and now Puka's star shines bright! <gasps> On Puka's signal, a terrifying number of fairies appeared out of the darkness. Staring down what must have been every last fairy in Avalon, Ceresa's legs began to tremble. But no matter the odds, she refused to give up. But... Cheshire? The writhing mass of fairies hot on his heels. Cheshire ran towards the pillar of light. Cheshire ran like the wind. Ceresa felt his warmth through his mane. There was no stopping them now.
Stop it! Keep at it, Cheshire! Just a bit more! <laughs> Escaping the fairies' clutches, the pair made it out of the forest. Or so they thought. by the fairies, they were slowly being dragged back into the forest. Ah! Refusing ah! to give in, Teresa held ah! on with all her might. Ah! But then... Something sent the fairies flying like leaves scattered to the wind. This was a technique Ceresa had seen before. But before Puka could finish, Morgana extinguished his life with a single powerful strike. Morgana! I'm so sorry for disobeying you, but please, save the scolding for later! of a boy if we don't do something he'll die please Morgana can you save him Morgana said nothing she gently stroked the wolf's fur confused Ceresa looked at her master huh She saw an expression of which she did not think Morgana was capable. It was warm, filled with love. Morgana? You want to save him? How dare you? How dare you say those words after what you did to him, you foolish girl! Teresa, why is that demon still here? Did you not reach the altar? What do you think those years of training were for? Morgana appeared to be growing more angry by the second. She advanced on Teresa and Cheshire. Morgana? What are you saying? What's wrong? You still don't get it! The training, the brace, the dream! 
Do you have any idea how long I prepared for the day my precious Lucaon would return? Thunder crashed in the distance. Wind screamed through the trees. A cold chill ran through the air. Dozens of girls I lured into that forest. Each required years of training. All for naught. I was so close this time, but you had to go and ruin everything, you selfish brat! Ceresa had endured her share of scolding from Morgana, but this time was different. These were not the words of a strict teacher. They were filled with nothing but pure loathing. Morgana, I... I... Useless girl! Lucaon and I will be together again. You will surrender that wretched demon this instant. Oh, I see. Made a new friend, have you? A demon born under the full moon of the bisextile night. That creature is the key to breaking Luca On's curse. Now, Cereza. I've waited far too long to let a child's sentiment stand in my way. Morgana, I know I wasn't a good pupil. I always messed up during training and broke your rules. Uh, I... I know I let you down. You might have been strict, but I always knew you cared about me. You are like a mother to me. I just wanted to make you proud. Get away! <laughs> Pull yourself together, she is our enemy. Cheshire tried to get Cereza to her feet. Morgana's next attack would come at any moment. But Cereza could not move a muscle. <laughs> Just then, something caused Morgana to stop. Using the last of his strength, Luca on clung to her dress. Please, mother! No more! I can't bear to see you like this! Don't fret, my dear. Soon everything will be back to the way it was. Her expression fixed, Morgana moved her son aside. A pity. You had the potential to become a fine witch, Cereza. If only you'd hardened your heart. But you were always so damn soft! Soft. 
forgive you! What's wrong? Giving up without a fight? Ceresa heard Cheshire's voice ringing clearly in her mind. What am I supposed to do? There's no way I can fight Morgana. I see. Well then, I guess that means our journey is over, hmm? The demon sounded disappointed. Journey? That's what you'd call it, right? This whole thing to save your mum? You blabbered so much about her, even I was starting to look forward to meeting her. Cheshire paused. What is it? I'm sorry for what I did back there in the forest. Cheshire. And you were right. I never would have made it this far on my own. Thank you. Ceresa was moved by the demon's unexpected words. you home. I intend to keep that promise. Friends protect each other. Friends keep their promises. Gone was the fear and hesitation from Ceresa's eyes. In its place was courage and steadfast resolve. I'm an Umbra witch, just like my mum. Come on, let's dance! Yo! 
Goodbye, Morgana!
Tracer. Shasha. You did the right thing, stopping my mother. It was an honor to meet you both. It was almost time to say goodbye to look on. I wish... we could have become friends. We did, Ceresa. And for that, I am thankful. Mother and child shared a tender embrace. This was the warmth he had been dreaming of. Thank you for always watching over me, Mother. You can rest now. I'm happy I was able to see your face one last time. Good night, my son. Sweet dreams. Ceresa did not know where fairy souls went in this chaotic world, but wherever Lucan wound up, she hoped he would find peace. <sighs> the end had come for Morgana the Witch. Her peaceful expression was replaced by one of agony. It was almost too much to watch. This is the fate that awaits every Umbra witch. An eternity, wandering the depths of Inferno. Ceresa did not look away. She watched as Morgana's soul was dragged to the underworld. Cheshire realized that this unexpected twist of fate had delivered exactly what he sought. A door to Inferno lay before him. But the portal was already growing unstable. It threatened to close at any moment. The journey had left the demon totally exhausted. Struggling to keep his eyes open, he stared pensively at his door home. gate will take you back to Inferno. <sighs> Go on. It'll close soon. Cheshire looked back at Ceresa. His expression said what they were both thinking. If I go back, you'll be all alone. Even after all you've been through, you're still gonna treat me like a kid? <laughs> Just wait, I'll be strong enough to summon you myself in no time. You just take it easy for a while, okay? Cheshire quietly turned back towards the portal. <sighs> Cheshire! 
Mistress! I'm going to keep getting stronger! I promise! A tremendous sound erupted from the portal, but Cheshire's voice cut through the din. I'd expect nothing less. And you better be one hell of a ferocious demon next time we meet! A calm returned to Avalon Forest. As if to wash away the pain of the night, the first rays of dawn enveloped Ceresa, bathing her in their warmth. I knew you'd make it. Looks like you'll be fine on your own, Cereza. Sean! Oh, thank you! I'll see you again when this is over.
The end. Cereza and the Lost Demon Hello? Oh, I'm exhausted.
A giant fairy fort, towering in the forest shadows. Atop its peak, the jagged mouth of a massive rift. Whatever might the fairies be planning inside? The ravages of time had not been kind to this palace, but they were unable to completely erase its former majesty. Cerisa remembered hearing that long ago a fairy queen resided in just such a place. A dazzling grove with gently lapping waves a striking contrast to the eerie Avalon forest. Enjoying the warm sand and cool breeze, Ceresa thought perhaps there was some kindness in fairy hearts after all. Having saved so many wisps, Ceresa and Cheshire had become heroes among Avalon's downtrodden. The peaceful inhabitants of the forest would sing tales of their bravery for years to come. The kind-hearted witch and her steadfast demon companion.
A magnificent tree rose before them. Its pure white branches stretched as far as the eye could see. It has stood as a symbol of the fairy kings of Avalon for generations. Thus began Jean and Chesh... I mean, Jean and Charles search for Ceresa. eyes grew wide. What lay waiting on the other side? Had they finally found Ceresa? Razor? It's faint, but I can sense her magic. And she's not alone. Something put Jean's nerves on edge. This presence belonged to no fairy. Look! Over there! Charles had spotted something. Jean followed Charles' gaze. She could see a small figure floating in the distance. It was Ceresa. She was unnaturally still, frozen by some unknown power. Jean looked at Ceresa's face. It was as pale as ice. So close. Whoever was behind this was determined to keep the girls apart. Charles bared his fangs and began to growl.
The source of Jean's unease appeared before them now. He was suspended in the air, like a fell spectre. Fixed by his gaze, neither dared to so much as breathe. You're the one who was speaking to me before. Who are you? So we meet again, my brave friend. Or perhaps introductions are in order. Yes, you may call me he who affirms all phenomena. My, that's quite a mouthful. You're worse than no name over there. No matter. Anyone crossing the Umbra will pay! Ark Eve Origin. To think that her continued defiance would bring me to this place. A slight miscalculation. But she will be mine soon, nonetheless. And then, I will affirm my world. As he spoke, the Spectre's eyes grew crazed. They smoldered with a dark energy. But Jean and Charles did not back down. What? Absolute poppycock. I won't let you lay a finger on my Umbran sister. Return, Cereza, or prepare to feel the wrath of the Umbra! Now is the time for all to be affirmed. Arc-Eve Origin will be mine. I'm being struck by an oversized claw. Resistance is futile. Incredible, you managed to cram a demon in there. The spectre opened a scroll and called forth a fairy from thin air. Using the magic of the fairy realm, this technique gave shape to the pain inside Cereza's heart. Cereza's pain? What a cowardly trick! What's the matter? Don't tell me you're giving up already. He probably tastes horrible. I better swallow him in one gulp. The demon was already licking his chops. But the spectre was unfazed. As he got to his feet, 
A faint smile crossed his lips. You still don't understand, Dominion. What will happen if you oppose me? How? How do you know my name? I will show you, Jean. Give you a glimpse at what will happen if you continue along your current path. The Spectre had them in his spell. A moment later, a torrent of horrible visions began to flood into Jean's mind. It was a vision of Jean as a grown woman, dealt a fatal blow by an unknown assailant. Charles tried with all his might, but he could not move. Jean, I have shown you a vision of things to come. If you do not distance yourself from them, that future will certainly find you. But this fate is not yet determined. Leave now, and it may yet be avoided. The spectre rose once again. Suspended midair, he looked down on them with his piercing gaze. He slowly turned to face Ceresa. Ark, leave, Origin. You cannot resist much longer. Soon you will give me that which I desire. Then, finally, Phenomenal affirmation will be realized. I told you, you won't lay a finger on my unbred sister! Jean stood tall in defiance. Perhaps I was too soft. Witness your cruel fate once more. <laughs> you too. That pipsquake made a promise to me she has yet to fulfill. You can't have her. The beast gave a fierce roar. Jean, you have seen what awaits you. Yet still, you would face me. I won't run away. I am going to be the strongest witch of all! You know what awaits, yet still you struggle. Prepare to 
Accept your fate, Sean. Perhaps I was not free. I will achieve phenomenal affirmation. The tool of the ultimate is a statistical impossibility. The Spectre's right hand began to glow with an icy glimmer. Say in the face of defeat. And when those pleas go unanswered, that is when you witness true despair. The spectral flames were slowly eating through his body, tearing him apart. After I finished with him, you're next. I tried to warn you not to get involved. It's a pity you will not listen. The room was flooded with a light as bright as the sun. For a moment, everything around them seemed to dissolve in the radiant glow. What? What is happening? I can't imagine. Could she have awakened?
The spectre's blood-curdling scream seemed to shatter the air itself. This is unfathomable. John, you have made your choice. That fate is now immutable. I will not fear my fate. Whatever may come, I will stand and face it! His power extinguished. The Spectre's body flickered then faded away. As if in response, cracks and fissures burst all around them, and the world began to crumble. It's all falling apart. Was this all just his illusion? Cereza! The color had begun to return to Ceresa's cheeks. She was not yet awake, but from the faint smile on her face, she appeared to be having a pleasant dream. I think she'll be all right. They will be able to return to the forest. And... It looks like my time is almost up. Jeanne's body had grown faint. Her technique had reached its limit. Her traveling soul yearned to return to her body. Well, Charles, which will it be? Which? What do you mean, which? Charles returned with a puzzled look. I'm asking, will you go back to that tattered doll, or shall I send you home to Inferno? Charles blinked incredulously. Home to Inferno? This was something unexpected. Did Jean have such a power? For a moment, Charles simply stared at John, saying nothing. Finally, he spoke. You think I'd trust you with that? Just keep it simple and put me back where you found me. I see. Have it your way. But come on, you must like that body. Better than the lump of scraps Ceresa drags around. Hmm. I hate them both the same. Charles grumbled in his usual irritated manner. Besides, you're too rough for my taste. At least the pipsqueak gives me a break once in a while. That's so. Seeing through his act, Jean smiled at the flustered demon. She used her umbran arts to grant his wish and returned him to his former body. Of lost again. With a peaceful expression on her face, she gave Cheshire a big squeeze. Cheshire sighed 
forehead and furrowed his brow. But somewhere deep down, he was relieved. Farewell, Charles! No, Cheshire! And don't you dare tell Cereza what happened here. I mean it! I don't take orders from humans. But you saved me back there. I suppose I can make an exception this once. Cheshire added softly. If I didn't know better, I'd swear I was talking to a human. Take care of my friend, Furball. Whatever lies ahead, I'll be ready. I'm going to be the strongest witch of all. Thus concludes the adventure of Jean and Charles. We have seen how Ceresa and Cheshire's journey went from here. But what of Jean? What happened to her? after learning of her fate. It may not be possible to change one's destiny. However, Jean's indomitable spirit and steadfast resolve will surely guide her down a true path. Let us wish her success in her journey and put this chapter away in a safe place. Forevermore, this story will remain our little secret. <laughs>